Happy Friday. Friday. How about that? Ooh, ooh. So happy. It. We made it, right? Um, a rainy, rainy week. Oh, it was terrible. Storms. Saturated. Yeah. Monday was a mess with all those tornado warnings yes. that yes. were all just funnel clouds. None of them ever touched the ground. Rain, 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 rain for the rest of the week. And yeah. then flooding. Today, better. Good. Better. You're going to have the forecast in just a second. Yes. It's not going to give away quite yet, but, but sticking with the weather theme, you've probably heard, like, I don't know if it's an old wives' tale or what it was, that, that you can tell how far thunder is or lightning is by the distance between, like, the time between the two of them. Yes. I think it was parents telling us, but they forgot a part. Exactly. <laughs> That's so, the important thing. So, Megan Bragg has more, including something from Brittany, on that missing part in this verify. Summertime means more storms for the Carolinas. We've certainly seen our share this week. Viewer Chris M. asked us, with all the storms lately, how accurate is the method of counting seconds between lightning and thunder to calculate miles for every second counted for how far away the lightning is? Our sources, WCNC meteorologist Brittany Van Voorhees and the National Centers for Environmental Information. As little kids, you probably were told to count the seconds between lightning and thunder, and that's how many miles away lightning Lightning would be. Honestly, I'm really glad you guys are doing this because it is something people get wrong all the time. Brittany says lightning is actually closer than you think. So it's whatever that second is, but those seconds are between the lightning and thunder. You have to do the division by five because that's factoring in the speed of sound. So if you count five seconds between a lightning strike and thunder, that means lightning is just one mile away, not five. When you're outside, Anytime, if there's thunder and lightning around, you could get struck because lightning can strike about 30 miles out of the center of the storm. Data from the National Centers for Environmental Information show over the past five years, four deaths and 12 injuries have been reported in North Carolina from lightning strikes. Basically, if you hear thunder or see lightning, go inside, wait 30 minutes till after the last time you saw it, and you're good to go. So we can verify that no, counting seconds between lightning and thunder to calculate the miles for every second is not accurate. Instead, you have to divide by five to really know how close it is. With your Verify, I'm Megan Bragg. Brittany, you were explaining this is a big deal because we're all miscalculating how close the lightning is. Yeah, so it's not that it's further away, it's closer. closer. So if you were to, let's say that we saw lightning right now, we were outside, and we went one, two, three, I four, I thought it was five. the thunder. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. So light, do so first. it's lightning first. Because oh. light, the so speed of... So I've been of, doing it all wrong. Yeah, so the speed what? of light is We're faster so than the speed of sound. So yes. you would see a flash of lightning first, oh. and then you would count until the thunder. So thunder moves at five, or moves, five, it's five seconds to move a mile. Mm -hmm. So when you count between the, five, the two, let's say it was five seconds, you're thinking, oh, the storm's five miles away. That's really one mile because oh. you're missing the dividing part. So that's why it's important. So if, essentially, if you're miscalculating it, the storm is five times closer to you than you think it is. But I was telling Meg this yesterday when we were doing this story. It can be confusing, especially yeah. like if you don't know and you're trying to tell. Like that would be like me trying to explain to my two-year-old nephew like what he should do. Yeah, Blair would be and, like, and, "What's and, divide?" And instead, you're trying to, <laughs> instead you're trying to explain it to two news anchors sitting next to you, and they're totally well, three, really. three news anchors. But she hasn't confessed; going... she doesn't know what you're talking about. The two of yes. us have no idea what you're talking about yes. at the time. So what I always tell Kia people. Might actually no. Is the so the when thunder roars move indoors, as Sarah said, this big push by the National Weather Service to encourage people to go inside. If you see lightning, hear thunder, go inside and wait at least 30 minutes until the last time you saw it or heard it. I think that is like a yeah. much easier thing for people to yeah. do. I yeah. That. Yeah. Um, and I mm. understand the calculation part, but the bottom line is is for example, this is not a shame at all. I'm just saying for myself, mm -hmm. if you see I feel lightning. Shame coming. <laughs> no, if you see lightning or you hear thunder and you're outside, you're not safe. You're yeah. close enough to be struck. Lightning can mm -hmm. strike 30 miles from outside the center of a storm. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I had a child or, like, I was yeah. talking to my two-year-old nephew, I would never be saying count to figure out how far away it is. I'd be saying go inside. Because really if inside. you heard or see it, you're, you're, you're at risk close of being struck. Yeah. Gotcha. John Kelly enough, saying, so. never heard, divide by five rule. Joy saying, see? I'm afraid of lightning, so I hide. <laughs> I don't try to see it and count. There is yeah. good news, however. Yes. This weekend, we don't. I mean, that's your I feel part. like we deserve it after this week, <laughs> No, you right? totally deserve it. I'm just like watching all your smiling faces. I know. Because yeah. It's been treacherous. Yeah. I know. Like, I always gross. say that, um, especially like early this year, we had so many rainy weekends. I never like to deliver bad weather. I don't think anyone does, you know, news. No. But I'm thrilled to fill in for Larry today. Good. He takes yeah. off so infrequently. I know. But today <laughs> was a great day for me to deliver the forecast for you. Right. So check this out. Today, we're back in the 80s. 
We will see a few storms this afternoon, but nothing too widespread, but some pockets of heavy rain. Tomorrow, lesser rainfall coverage. We're only talking a 30% chance, and a lot of this does look to start to wrap up in time for Charlotte FC. So I'm still keeping a close eye on the forecast around 7, 7.30, but a lot of this does look to be before 6, 6.30. So maybe a few storms around for tailgating, but again, just stay weather aware. And remember when thunder roars, we've indoors. Uh, on <laughs> Sunday, though, lesser rainfall coverage, only about a 20% chance, 90 under a mostly sunny sky. Guy. So Ben Thompson has been bothering yep, me every weekend if he can go lay by the pool. Ben. <laughs> last weekend was good. Last week was amazing. This week will oh be good yes. too. Hey, so there we go. love it. Well, the, well it. done. Well it. done. Well done. I'll take a bow. Take a curtsy. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Brittany, thanks. Brittany, thanks. All right, folks. Here's hoping you enjoy the nicer weather yes. this weekend. Dry out, and then we'll see you back here Monday morning for another edition of Wake Up Charlotte to Go. Bye, everybody.